Shortly, we will be joining hundreds of thousands here in Washington and in other marches around the country for the March for Our Lives. But before we do, it's my honor to turn this stage over to members of our community and some allies who've been tragically and directly impacted by the epidemic of gun violence in this country today. You know, many of them have truly become part of our family. Since that tragic night nearly two years ago, these individuals are part of our family. And on June 12, 2016, our nation was shaken to its core by a tragedy that claimed the lives of 49 people celebrating Latin night at a popular LGBTQ nightclub in Orlando, Florida. As the tragedy at Pulse showed us all, hate can turn deadly when coupled with unfettered access to military-style assault weapons. What happened in Orlando made clear that for our community to truly be safe, and we need to do more than just stop the hate. We also need to stop the epidemic of gun violence that plagues this country. And that's exactly why just days after the attack in Orlando, working in partnership with gun safety advocates, HRC's board of directors took decisive action and we proudly voted to stand with our allies in the movement and endorse common sense gun safety laws. But we can't only come together in the wake of a tragedy. Every day we have to muster the strength to fight with the same pride, courage, and unity that we saw after the tragedy at Pulse and now after Parkland. It's our responsibility to honor them with action. The individuals that I have the privilege of introducing to you today have shown enormous courage courage in the face of unthinkable tragedy. Christine Leinenen is the mother of Drew Leinenen, whose life was taken at Pulse. Brandon Wolf is a Pulse survivor and a friend of Drew's. Jose Ariagata is Drew's best friend. Ricardo Negron is the director of Project We Are Orlando. And Earl Crittenden is an HRC member and the chair of the board of directors for the One Pulse Foundation. Please take a look at this video as we remember those who were taken nearly two years ago. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Christine, Brandon, Jose, Ricardo, and Earl.
I stand before you today not only as the chair of the One Pulse Foundation, but also as a proud member of the Federal Club. For too long, our country has ignored the chorus of voices speaking out to demand action on issues of hate and gun violence. Almost two years ago, I became a member of this chorus. And in that time, I often have felt tired and frustrated that we were not being heard. Actually, that we would never be heard. But no more. The voices emerging in the wake of the Parkland tragedy give new hope that we can do better and we will do better. We do not have to accept that tragedies like Columbine and Sandy Hook and Pulse and Las Vegas are not preventable. We must keep our voices united and demanding. And that is why the One Pulse Foundation stands with HRC and those taking part today in the March for Our Lives. I am in awe of these students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. I know what it is to walk into a space that was once joyous and full of love, and now you can only see and smell death. I know what it is to bury community members and wonder what, what their lives could have been. These students are dealing with excruciating weight of grief, but instead of allowing themselves to, to break them, they have turned it into power. Some of the students recently came to the Pulse site to pay their respects to the 49, and you can see it in their eyes. They mean business, and that's a good thing because we adults, adults have essentially failed them. This moment, this movement is gaining momentum. This moment is the opportunity to raise our voices for the lives we have lost and proclaim the lives that we can save. These tragedies are exacerbated by weapons made to kill as many people in as short a time as possible. And our communities must do better and connect with those who are on the path of destruction and hate and pull them back in before it's too late. As the activists of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas will tell you, and the survivors of Pulse will tell you, this truly does affect all of us. We need the strength of every voice in this struggle. We are all affected by these tragedies and it is time that they end. In the words of Barbara Poma, the founder of the Pulse Nightclub and the founder of the One Pulse Foundation, we will not let hate win. Thank you. Good morning, HRT. I am very honored and very humbled to be standing here before such a bigly crowd. I'm glad you got it. <laughs> um, you know, like many before me, due to the economic crisis, and many more after me due to the devastation caused by Hurricane Maria, I moved to the United States back in 2015 in search of prosperity. Never did it cross my mind that years after, I would be leading LGBTQ work with the Hispanic Federation in Orlando, and that I would be standing here in front of you before we have to go out there and literally march for our lives. But then it happened, and a beautiful night in June of 2016 turned into the deadliest attempt against the LGBTQ community and the Latinx community, particularly for Puerto Ricans who, like me, had come to the U.S. to live their best life. My passion for advocacy did not develop overnight. I am an attorney, after all, but as a survivor of the Pulse Massacre, my life changed completely, and now most of my time revolves around creating safe spaces and advocating for progress within our communities. And that's why we're here, because the LGBTQ community knows too damn well when it comes to violence and hatred. And it is our time to come together and say that we have had enough, because gun violence affects us all. After polls and through long, long days of work, I hope for the adoption of common sense policies that will make people less inclined towards acquiring and using these type of weapons of mass, mass murder that have been used in shootings. 
group of survivors, elected officials who were on our side, and many sectors came together, and we were asking and begging for changes. Nothing happened. And now after Vegas, after Parkland, we're here yet again, but we won't take no for an answer. We're here to uplift. <laughs> we have to uplift the work that is done by the Human Rights Campaign, by organizations like the Hispanic Federation, like the Drew Project, to honor the lives of those affected by gun violence and to honor those that have been taken from us. But we have to say that we have had it, and enough is enough, because not a single life more should be lost to senseless gun violence. And we will demand from the people in charge of our safety that they do everything they have to do to protect us. We should not be afraid to go to the movies. We should not be afraid to go to the clubs. And kids should not be afraid to go to such a sacred space as schools. <laughs> we want, we want to feel safe and we want change and we want it now. And if change doesn't come, we will change those in charge of making the decisions. So that is why we're here today and that's why we're going out there to march. First of all, I'm sorry for my English, okay? Um, my name is Jose Arriga. I want to thank HRC for their continued commitment to the fight for the 49 innocent life taken from us at polls. Christopher Leinonen was my former boyfriend and one of my best friends. He was an inspiration to all of us, not only in the way he cared, for others in his job as a mental health counselor, but in the way he loved us, his family, and friends. When I moved to the United States from Chile, I didn't know anyone. I had no friends, I had no family, I spoke no English. Then I met Chris, who became my boyfriend, became my chosen family, and who even taught, taught me English, which is a really hard job, you can see. <laughs> Christopher was taken from all of us by hate, evil, hate and evil that because of weak gun law was all allowed to rip Orlando's LGBTQ community apart. We are still healing, but we are stronger now and proud to stand with HRC and the fight to end gay violence. Thank you, HRC. <laughs> Good job, Jose. Before I get started, I did want to say that I met Ana Navarro in the back, and she had forgotten to mention that her cousin is Maria Wright, whose son, Jerry Wright, also died at Pulse with the other, with the 49, so she is related to the Pulse family directly. But my son Christopher, his boyfriend Juan, and 47 others were murdered at the Pulse nightclub, gunned down in an act of pure hate. Christopher was my only child and a proud gay man. I couldn't have loved him more. As I used to tell him, you can't do better than perfect. Christopher, his friends called him Drew, was always a force for good in the world. He was a supporter of the human rights campaign, and he never shied away from speaking up for those who needed it most. 
Like many of you here, he was an activist. He would have loved to be in this room this morning. Christopher lost his voice that night, but we must carry on his voice going forward. The horrific mass shooting at the high school in Parkland was difficult for me to process. I know too well what many parents, students, and loved ones are going through. But like you and millions across our country, I am so inspired by the young people who are stepping up to bravely fight for common sense gun safety reform. And I am proud to stand alongside of them here today. Since Christopher's death, I've called on politicians to do better by the LGBTQ community. I've spoken out forcefully for common sense gun safety resolutions. It's time to put an end to the loopholes that make it easy for criminals, terrorists, and bigots to get their hands on deadly weapons. including the military-style assault weapons used in so many of this, these grievous attacks. I thank HRC's board for vowing to work in coalition with advocates for common sense gun violence prevention measures, including Every Town for Gun Safety, the student activists from Parkland Stone, Stoneman Douglas High School, Together, let us raise our voices a little louder. We must do it for the amazing student activists marching this weekend. We must do it for every student, every churchgoer, every LGBTQ person who fears that they could be the next victim. We must do it for my son. Thank you. Now introducing Brandon. apologize. I'm going to try to control my emotions. I just think that we should be marching with Drew today instead of for him. It's been almost two years since the worst night of my life. On June 12, 2016, a gunman entered Pulse nightclub just a few yards from the bathroom sink where I was standing, and he opened fire. What at first sounded to me like a music malfunction turned out to be gunshots. Armed with an assault rifle and countless rounds of ammunition, the shooter killed 49 people that night. One of them was Drew. You know, I'll never forget meeting Drew for the first time. We waited for uh, a table at P.F. Chang's. We were actually on a date. That didn't work out very well. And he said, I have a question for you. And I was prepared. What's my favorite color? Where do I like to eat? And he said, what do you think of the for-profit health care system and its impact on consumers? <laughs> Not where did I grow up or do I like pasta, but a question more fitting for a presidential debate. And over the years, our conversation stayed exactly like that. He taught me that although we may not look the same or have the same backgrounds, our struggles are more alike than they are different. He challenged me to be a better person every single day. And he taught me to love myself for who I am. Drew, his partner Juan, my boyfriend Eric, and I went to Pulse together that night. We got there around midnight. It was busy, and there we were. Four friends, all different, laughing, drinking, dancing, telling jokes. We were absolutely nothing I had imagined was possible. We were black, white, gay, Latino, Asian, 
and just full of love for each other. In fact, our last conversation was exactly that. On the patio, in the way he always did, Drew gathered us in a circle and he had these long arms and he put them around us and he said, you know what we never say enough? It's that we love each other. So I want to tell you that I love you guys. Just a few minutes later, shots rang out. The gun used that night got off 45 rounds in one minute. Over a dozen of them killed Drew and Juan. I'm not going to pretend that the days and weeks following Pulse were not hard. I'm not going to pretend that today is not hard. There were plenty of days where I considered hiding under my bed and waiting for this nightmare to end. But it never did. And I knew that if I didn't stand up and raise my voice, then Drew and Juan would lose theirs forever. So I did. And for the past 20 months, I have committed myself to saving this country from gun violence and hatred. I joined the Orlando community in calling for LGBTQ equality. I called out our useless lawmakers that leveraged Orlando's pain to get a leg up on their campaign competition. I also helped to found the Drew Project, where we work to launch gay straight alliances in public schools, send future leaders to college, and empower the kind of young people that have brought us to Washington, D.C. today. In all, I think I felt an obligation. I felt a responsibility to ensure that Drew's voice did not die on the dance floor with him. And that's why news of a shooting in Parkland felt like a gut punch. In one single instant, all the pain and trauma of Pulse flooded back. I wondered if I had failed those students. I considered the hours spent fighting for change, and I wondered if it had all been in vain. Honestly, I wondered if I had let Drew down. But something miraculous happened. In the Parkland survivors, I saw Drew's spirit. I saw that same boundless optimism and belief that the world is better when we come together. And in them, I finally saw hope, a hope that this time it can be different. That's why this march is so important. It's the reason that I'm here today. These incredible students have gathered across this nation, put their long arms around us, and just like Drew would have, reminded us that our future is still very bright. In one month, a group of teenagers has taken on one of the most polarizing issues in our nation's history, amassed a social media army, and threatened the very existence of the gun lobby that cripples our political system today. but they're not going to win this fight alone. This community, the LGBTQ community, knows all too well the horrors of gun violence and hatred. Too often, we are the targets. But what the Pulse shooting taught me is that we are not victims. We are warriors. And just like so often before, it is our duty to take to the front lines of progress, and fight for the change this country deserves, this time with new allies by our side. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, HRC, for advocating for us. I can't wait to march for our lives.